So finally, finally we get to my girl, Tulsi Gabbard. They finally ask her a question. What's the first question that they ask her? Hey, you said some shit about our, 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 our coronated queen. The, she's not the queen of the country, but she is the queen of the fucking corporate leftist media. You called Hillary Clinton the personification of rot. What does that mean, right? And Tulsi made her standard remark about uh, her her consistent standard remark about the fact that uh, we need uh, more anti-war principles. We need less funding of the military, um, and uh, uh, the, you know there is there's corruption in the Democratic Party. The, a lot of these candidates are bought, bought by. Um, uh, corporate ideals, they don't really stand for the people. Uh, and what she's talking about is reallocating and reinvesting in the American people. So, so we actually put money where we need to put money rather than saying, no, 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 what we need to do is fund more wars and save more corporations. And it, it was weird because she made this statement, right? Because I, I bet she knew she was going to be asked that question. I think we all knew she was going to be asked that question. I was kind of hoping that they would just let it go. You know, like it's been, it's been in the, but it's such a hot button issue, right? Like every, like I did a video on it as well and I talked about it, but they're still like, they're still hammering it home because they still kind of need that Russiagate narrative to, to stay somewhere within the zeitgeist of what they're, uh, what they're doing. And... And then they kind of turned to uh, Kamala Harris, and then they were like, hey, what do you think about this Kamala Harris, candidate that was kneecapped by Tulsi Gabbard three, three debates ago and hasn't really been able to recover because people found out that you're just a horrible, horrible candidate and has been lying to the American people since the start of the, uh, pre- the, the, this insane presidential fucking primary cycle? What do you think about this? And Kamala fires back uh, with uh, with the standard fucking weak stock smear campaign that time and time again has proved not to work, has proved only to like make Tulsi's fucking candidacy stronger. Uh, and she goes, "Oh, she went on Fox News and spent the last four years trashing the Democrats. Yeah, because the Democrats are trash." You fucking stole an election to coronate your queen of the warmongers. And then she fucking lost to a liar and a huckster. What do you think? What Like, you need to be better and you're not. The Democrats are not doing good. And Tulsi Gabbard is like, hey, remember what our party used to stand for? The people. We actually used to be the party that would listen and fight for the people, and now we're fucking not. What happened? Let's go back to that. Why are we in these fucking wars? Let's stand with a candidate that actually fucking matters, Bernie Sanders. And then she did. She stood by Bernie Sanders in 2016, and ever since then, she's basically been attacked by all of the members of the DNC, by all the members uh, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, corrupt Clinton crony mobiles that are just fucking out there spreading their fucking lies, controlling the media, turning it, turning, you know, see, not turning, but pro- pushing CNN and MSNBC to be more of a propaganda machine. And and then she goes, uh, uh, oh well, you know, you 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 you, dog, you went and talked to Bashar al-Assad. Yes, yeah, so did Dennis Kucinich. And you should want to talk to these people and see if there see if there's some sort of diplomatic arrangement, so that you know, you don't send a bunch of soldiers to die. And guess who the victims of those wars are? It's not these rich people that are in power. It's not. It's the soldiers. It's the citizens of these countries. It's the Syrians that are in trouble. 
It's the Syrians that are the victims of that war. Actual Syrian citizens. And does Kamala Harris give a shit about that? No, she propagates the fact that she pushes the idea that you need to be at war with this guy. Yeah, he's not great. And she's called him a brutal dictator every fucking time. Every fucking time that she's been asked that question. And that's the first question that MSNBC and CNN asks. And they always fucking go down the smear tactic route. Why, don't, why doesn't she fucking go on these networks? Because these networks don't fucking let her talk about any of this shit. They all, they, they all veer down the smear campaign. They all veer down this fucking shit, like, lies. And they kind of, like, throw it at her. And don't actually let her talk about what she stands for. They make up shit that she stands for, and then she has to refute it and push back against them. And then we still, like, people that don't know her don't know what she stands for. That's why she's the most Google candidate after every fucking debate. And, to that credit, Kamala Harris won't call Hillary Clinton a fucking war criminal. I bet she won't even call George Bush a war criminal. So Gabbard came out and uh, uh, she basically called it out and said, this is all smears. These are all lies. This is the baseless tactics that's been used time and time again by corporate media and the DNC elites. And uh, she doesn't have any proof and she can't really stand up towards the substantive change that Tulsi Gabbard is talking about. This is powerful language, you know? Uh, and, uh, and, oh, this is the big thing that she says, right? She says that we need to put the American people over the Democratic Party. We need to put people over party. I've been saying this for the last fucking three years. What we need is a candidate that we can vote for. And who, who can we vote for? It's going to be a candidate that puts the people over the fucking party. If your entire campaign, if your entire platform is we need to beat the Republicans and the Donald Trump because we're Democrats, because we have a different label than the other guy, then you have shit. You you ain't got nothing. And you're not giving anybody a reason to vote for you. You're not giving anybody a reason to be on your side. Tulsi Gabbard is fighting for the people. Bernie Sanders fighting for the people. Andrew Yang fighting for the people. They are putting people over the party. That's what we need to be. And the Democrats used to be that. The Democrats used to put people over the party. They used to fight and champion for uh, the rights of the people. That's what the Democratic Party used to stand for. JFK, FDR. Fuck, even Eisenhower, who was a Republican, uh, was standing up for the people in some respects. Way more than some of the Democrats are now. And then Harris rebutes that and goes, well, we need, a, we need a candidate for all the people. Yeah, it's fucking Tulsi Gabbard. Because guess what? At our town halls, there's a bunch of conservatives, there's a bunch of libertarians, greens, independents, liberals, conservatives, whoever it is. They're all showing up. They're all dropping their labels to be like, this person seems like they're on our fucking side. And they want to listen to us and they care about us. And they're passing legislation that uh, that that makes us feel like we're actually represented, heard, and uh, and and actually like gives us some power in this representative democracy. It ain't Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris doesn't stand for the people. Which people do you stand for, Kamala? Is it all the fucking people that you put into prison? Is it those people? That's who you stand for. That whole thing um, felt very staged. The whole thing felt very staged. Uh, Not Tulsi's responses. I think Tulsi was genuinely responding to the bullshit that was being thrown at her. But I I felt like uh, the way they asked Kamala Harris the question, because Tulsi didn't call Kamala Harris out. They just kind of were just like, Kamala, would you like to respond? It's like, what? Why? The, Kamala Harris isn't fucking involved in, in, in any of this. You just did it because Kamala Harris was kneecapped in the second Democratic debate. And by pushing this uh, this lie 
this Russiagate lie, this, oh, she's going to support Bashar al-Assad lie when she doesn't support Bashar al-Assad. Tulsi Gabbard is against what's going on in Syria, but she's for the objective truth. When the American uh, uh, military and the American government is lying about certain things, and the, and the Syrian government is lying about certain things, yeah, she's going to do the objective thing, which is go and investigate, go and figure out what the fuck is actually happening there. Try to find the actual truth of the situation. It all fucking felt staged, right? And that Fox News thing that she brought up was, was like, didn't fucking Joy Behar do that? When she didn't let Tulsi finish a goddamn sentence on The View. And she let Meghan McCain sound more rational than her. Fucking Meghan McCain sounded more rational than Joy Behar. You should be ashamed of yourself, Joy. You fake progressive asshole. But that's that's what Kamala was doing. She used like DNC fucking talking points, corporate media fucking talking points, right? She used the same talking points that Joy Behar t- uh, tried to bring up. And here's the thing, Tulsi does go on CNN and MSNBC and CBS and ABC. It's just they ask her bullshit questions and don't let her actually say anything. They don't let her actually talk about what her campaign is about. They don't actually let her talk about what her policies stand for. They don't actually talk about what her record is. They just go, well, you seem to be a friend of Assad. So I uh, heard that at one point you guys had a, a tea party. At, uh, I, we, you know, there, we drew a, we don't have a photograph or, or any sort of real concrete evidence, but I made a picture. I drew a picture in a book and, uh, and that's good enough. Uh, so uh, explain yourself. And she's like, well, that's a, a drawing, and uh, I need to. I, I will go fight for peace. Uh, and, and if it means talking to dictators like Assad, just like JFK talked to Khrushchev and FDR talked to Stalin, then that's what needs to be done because I think sacrificing the life of, you know, middle class, middle income, middle class people to go and send them out to war uh, and putting their life on the line and putting the life of, of Syrian citizens on the line is wrong. And they go, okay, so you support war crimes. What? No. She's actually against it by saying that she's against American military intervention. What the fuck are you talking about? It's such a ridiculous way that they fucking tried to smear. Okay, I know I kind of got real upset about it, but it's just bullshit. Like, we're still, it's still happening regardless of the fact that, like, all of this shit has been exposed. All of their smears have been exposed as a bunch of nonsense garbage lies. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content that was discussed and the the type of humor that you saw in this video, then you probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. I've got live shows coming up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Columbia, South Carolina, New York City, Philadelphia. I'm going to be on tour uh, in in a whole bunch of places uh, at the end of 2019 and into 2020. Go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com for my entire tour schedule. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Check out my entire tour schedule, get your tickets there, and uh, we'll see you on the road. Thanks again.